For this video, I'll be using a primitive hypothetical eyeless creature. Ironically, this creature is shaped like something that young Earth creationists should be familiar with. Now, the surface of this creature is covered with cells, cells that are already slightly photosensitive because all cells react in some way to energy wavelengths. Now, we're already assuming that this primitive creature reproduces. We're well beyond the point of abiogenesis and single-celled organisms. We are at a point where there are colonies of multicellular organisms, and they do reproduce. Creatures always reproduce with more offspring than are actually needed to propagate the species. This is because natural selection picks off ones that are not as good. In this creature's offspring, there will be some variation. Some might have wrinkled skin. Some might have depressions in their skin. Even a slight depression increases the surface area of the skin and thus more reactivity of the cells on the skin surface. Because the depression is concave, light can bounce from either direction, and the organism would be able to sense which direction light is coming from. The deeper the depression, the more angled the light becomes, and the easier it is for the organism to tell which direction the light is coming from. We see the exact same process in certain snakes that have pits on their lips. The only difference is they can detect heat, a different frequency range of energy instead of light, but still the process is the same. Over many, many generations, the deeper pits are favored because it allows the organism to tell which direction light and possibly motion and predators is coming from. Remember, a trait that helps the organism survive will probably be genetically passed on to the offspring. As the eye socket became deeper over many, many generations, other things may have been tried, like a protective cover to keep debris out, or tiny muscles that were already available underneath the skin became more developed to help direct the pit or even more sensitive cells that are sensitive to specific frequencies of energy, like higher light frequencies or lower light frequencies. Over many generations of slightly varied offspring, you will eventually end up with a creature that has optical pits that may be covered, may be filled with a saline solution, may have a primitive lens, may have muscles to help direct the eye, possibly even see the full spectrum of visible light. And remember, lastly, the human eye is a piece of shit. It is not nearly as good as some other animals. It is not nearly as complex. Our eyes are blind in the dark. They cannot see ultraviolet or infrared frequencies. And they're relatively nearsighted. A hawk can see miles and miles and miles whereas a human sometimes has trouble reading print on a page in front of him. The eye, while an amazing, amazing organ, is nothing more than a bunch of photosynthetic cells arranged in such a way to keep the organism alive. 